We want to get out of the gate and fly. And sometimes you fly and it's not good because your foundation wasn't solid. So you know what? A lot of guys think, oh, I went from a million to seven million in sales in a year. And you think it's great. But did you really have a foundation to develop that? And if you didn't, you're going to collapse. But I was working at a company. I was trying to send out money to a factory about 10 grand, nothing. And the owner kept telling, okay, we're doing it next week, next week. I went to a friend of mine. I said, you know, these guys are in trouble. He looked at me like I was crazy. Are you out of your mind? There's 150 people. He's doing $200 million. I said, he can't send out 10 grand. There's no money. Welcome back to this chapter of the Business Library. Today, I have Kemi Safdin on, and we're going to talk about stress and entrepreneurship and how you can actually reach that next level, which is not something you're able to do if you're stressed running around like a headless chicken all the time. I'm not very productive. That's the wrong kind of busy. It might be busy, but it's not the right kind. Before I get into the first question, of course, this episode is sponsored by our free course, Content Marketing for Beginners. Links for that down below, along with all Kemi's links. So if you hear something that you like, Feel free to check them out down below. We made it as easy for you as possible. So how did you actually land on wanting to help entrepreneurs reach the next level? Why is that, do you think? How did that come about? So how it came about is my, my own personal journey was I, I had owned my own business for about nine or 10 years. And when I first got into it, I did not. I was in, I'm in the import business, bringing in merchandise from China and selling it to retailers. And I had no experience in that business. And a friend of mine told me, I'm going to give you your first lesson in business. Sales covers everything. Just sell. Do a lot of selling and everything will work out. And that's pretty much what we did. I had a partner. And as the years gone by, we had gotten the business up to about $10 million. And all of a sudden, there's no money. Like, where's the money? We're doing sales. Where's, where, where is everything? And again, because we weren't educated, we learned the hard way, brought in a business consultant, brought in an accountant, and we realized that we weren't making as much money as we thought. We weren't looking at the whole picture of the business. We weren't looking at what was our true costs in bringing the merchandise in and selling it. There's markdowns, there's allowances, there's a lot of different pieces in the puzzle that we were ignoring because we were focusing on one thing. Um, I, I would love to tell you we figured everything out, and today we're doing $150 million and everything's great. But uh, that was not the case. It was too late in the game we, and we closed that business. Um, since then, I've been working at different companies, um, running divisions for people. But I always learned from that. And I always like to share with people is always look at the big picture, especially in entrepreneurship. We get, everyone gets focused on one aspect of what they need to do. And before you turn around, and again, it could be whatever you're doing, before you turn around, you're, you're forgetting those, what you think are small pieces of the puzzle. And, and sometimes it's too late. It's too late. And, and it's just been a, a, um, something I've always told people as they're starting new ventures. Don't forget, look at the big picture. Whatever you're doing, map it out clearly and see every direction of where you want to go and, and what you need to do in all aspects of what you're doing. Yeah, in so so spot on in, in so many ways because I can relate to it myself. Getting caught up in the few things that evolves around selling. If it's it might also be marketing related, but every like get attention, get attention, like get eyes on you. Uh, in the start, that's actually well the most important thing because if you don't have any money, you don't have any business. That's a, a pretty yes. simple equation. That's when simple like business is very simple, not too complex. A very simple equation. Yeah. Bring money in so that we actually can start doing something. So you said you were running like this company and you like import company, you're doing 10 million in sales. Like how much do you think it cost you learning these lessons if you had to put some sort of figure on it? I mean, there's not a really a price you could put on it. You know, you know, I learned one thing. There's no such thing as losing. You know, when we have a success, we celebrate. When we have a challenge, we learn from it. If you don't learn from it, and that's a key to an entrepreneur. So if you don't learn from it, you wasted it. When you learn from it, so the, I mean, look, it's an invaluable price because I use it today, you know, in whatever I'm doing and, and talking to people as well. 
it's it's in you can't put a price on it obviously and but it's always better to learn from someone else's mistakes and not repeat it yourself <laughs> true you know true. um but I, I would say you you have to know you never lose you never lose you always if you use whatever that challenge was to learn and grow from it you gained I- immensely i agree with you on that it's losing is kind of a, a mindset you have for yourself if you decide i don't i'm not getting anything from it and you're just focusing on everything negatively and not as a lesson in any way shape or form then we can discuss then you lost but it's it comes down to your own view of it and not the situation within itself so with all these lessons under your belt how is your approach to consulting different than the traditional consulting firm because there's a lot of them out there so that's a very loaded uh question i actually am very and and i don't want to disparage the whole industry i'm very anti-traditional consultant um and i'm not saying this is across the board for everybody but generally speaking i've worked with consultants i've always found that they ask you what's going on which they pretty much know and then they tell you what to do ah you know you need to increase your sales you need to fire seven people in your staff and get new people you need to do this and you need to do that and generally speaking nothing gets done because you know anything and it could be in business it could be in life if the change doesn't come from within it's not happening let's say you have a guy that's a, a smoker i could tell him a hundred times or a guy that's overweight i could tell him a thousand times, you have to lose weight You have to stop smoking. You have to lose weight. You have to stop smoking. Okay, thank you very much. And odds are they're not going to, right, until it comes from them or until they get a heart attack or they get scared or something. So what I always do is ask pointed questions. Why do you feel your business is failing? What hasn't worked? Inevitably, you know, whoever has built a business, even an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, he he's a very talented person. He didn't get to where he was by not being smart. It's just what happens. There's a lot of pride, like you said. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of pressure, and and you just can't think anymore. You you're losing that clarity, and sometimes you need that outside voice to help you gain that clarity. So for me to tell you, oh, you need to do this and this and this. I, first of all, I think it's arrogant because yeah. who am I, who am I to tell you what to do? And generally speaking, through pointed questions, you gain that insight. You realize, you know, I'm realizing now that our sales presentations aren't what they should be. Oh, okay. What do you think you need to do with that? You know, I think we need to do A, B, and C, whatever the case may be. And generally speaking, through questions, you're activating that person's space. You're giving, opening that space in his mind to, to, um, come up with those insights i i rarely like to tell someone did you ever think maybe you should do that i mean look every now and then if it's something that's very clear you might say something but also you know what i'm not you and you're not me so the way i think of how i would handle a situation doesn't mean you would handle the same way look we have different personalities we have different feelings we have different ways we do things so Generally, I always feel, and, I, and I've always noticed, the, the insights will come from the person himself versus the traditional consulting of telling you what to do to get it done. Kind of, in some sort of way, taking a little bit of a, a coachative approach. Yes. Yes, a lot of I imagine. it. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Which, I do definitely, I prefer coaching to consulting. In most cases. Yes. Because it's it's more of like that inside approach, um, and normally, like, of course, it's hard to see the problems you mentioned. It's great to get that outside perspective. I completely agree with that. But the harder part than actually discovering things to fix, at least for me in my life and my business, is actually going out and implementing them and getting it into my routine in the start. Like that 21 day startup period. I think there's, there's something like that. So you, do you have some advice in regards to how to make things a habit? 
So I, I think that's something we all struggle with, including myself. You know, it's funny. I guarantee you every quote-unquote expert goes through this. <laughs> we all go, you know, it's so much easier to tell somebody else and but to do it yourself. I, I think, you know, I, I think it's critical to have some type of an accountability partner. You know, you need you need someone to be you need to be accountable to someone or something. If it's uh, a friend, if it's a coach, if it's you know within a week I'm going to do X and have someone follow up on it, or leave yourself a reminder. Or uh, there definitely has to be some kind of accountability in place. You know, it's fine. I was talking to my wife yesterday, and we were talking about um, losing weight and people that go to nutritionists, etc. And she said. When you go to a nutritionist or you go to a Weight Watchers or something like that, you're much more keen on staying to your diet because you you know that next week you have to get on the scale and weigh yourself in front of people, and, and you know right. so you you know so I think it's key to set up some type of an accountability system. Yeah, probably your best way out there. I don't think it's going to change that so much actually. Sometimes in life, where well, especially when you're out helping other business owners, what you said a couple of years ago, and you're like, uh, what was I thinking? This answer I don't see changing ever. Uh, we've talked a little bit about stress throughout this episode as well, and entrepreneurship can be very stressful, especially because you're wearing many hats, doing many things and keeping track of everything. Sometimes it's the most stressful thing. So for the audience listening to us, what are some ways you recommend them to lower their stress levels? I think there's a couple of things. The first thing is, no, you know, it's such a cliche saying, but it's really true. Understand your why and your purpose. And as if you always know, my, why am I doing this? What's the reason? Why did I do, why did I get into this? Oh, because. I want to be more independent. Uh, I don't want to be tied to a desk. I want to be, you know, when you have that front and center, when the stress hits, you'll be able to stop and say, wait, your, your initial reaction is, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. I, just, I can't deal with this too much between the social media and I'm not getting, getting clients and I'm not doing business. I'm out. I'm done. But if you say, wait a minute, stop. Why did I choose this path? Ah, oh, I chose this path. Because I want to do A, B, and C. So I think one way to reduce the stress is always remember why you got into it. Because that will help you take that step back and, re and re release that stress. I think another way to reduce the stress is just, you know what? When you're having that stressful minute, stop. Just stop. Maybe take a walk around the block. Listen to some music. Do You know what I'm saying? And, and just de-stress. You know, anything you do in life, if it's business, if it's life is stress. There is stress in life. Anyone that tells you that it's uh, sunshine and peachy keen and everything's great. Every challenge has come up in life. That's just inevitable. It's how you react to them. You know, you can let that stress weigh you down or you can stop and say it's what you said before. A lot of it is mindset. A lot of it is mindset. Aside from knowing my purpose, it's how you're going to are you going to take that stress and let it bury you. That's why they say, you know, I went to a time management seminar uh, years ago, and the instructor said, you know, words are very, very powerful, very powerful. So when I say I have, when I say I have a problem, right away, I'm down. I'm stuck. Yeah. And when I say I have a challenge, I'm up. I'm up for the challenge. I'm down for the problem. So it's, it's a lot what you said also, a lot of his mindset. So I, I would say, just getting back to it, one way is to always remember why you did this and what your purpose is in this. And that will help you get past the stress. And sometimes just de-stress. Shut the computer and take a walk, take a run, listen to some music. Yeah, and think about your why. I yes. think combining those two is actually yes. really powerful. Yeah, sometimes it is because you don't want to do it. You don't want to record the video, you don't want to send the proposal, you don't want to jump on the sales call because for whatever reason, you're not feeling like it. And at that point, if you don't have something bigger, and I'm speaking from experience, you just quit. 
and just say, I can't do it. You find up some silly excuse or lie, and then you feel bad about yourself, and then you're down in this negative spiral. And then you start speaking negative towards yourself, as Kimmy referred to, and then you're <laughs> very far down a deep spiral very quickly. I think it, that's yes. two very, very good points, actually. I like simple things. I appreciate that. Yes, yeah. Well, there's so many more complex things in business. Like the de-stressing part shouldn't be the more com most complex yes, thing. <laughs> then you're stressing out about doing it. Yeah. So, okay, we're gonna remember it. Uh, can I remember the exercise right? Just when you go to like the yeah. physio, like you're worrying about remembering all of the different. Am I doing it right? Am I so I get stretched in the right spot? Yeah. All of these things. <laughs> <laughs> just start stressing you out. Um, another thing I wanted us to touch upon was in regards to, I can't remember the statistic, but it's a very high number of businesses don't make it out of the first five years. It's a 95% or something like that. Wow. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very high up there. Why do you believe that so many businesses fail and don't make it past that? <sighs> You know, it's funny. I'm I'm sure each one has a, a different reason. Yeah, you know, I, I don't yeah. think you can give a blanket answer for it, but I think it's like anything else. You know, when you're building a house, if you don't have a strong foundation, you could build a mansion with twenty bedrooms and everything else. If the foundation is not strong, the house is going to collapse. So I, I would. Again, I can't look at every statistic, but I would wonder how strong the foundation was. You know, a lot of times we just want to boom. We want to get out of the gate and fly. And sometimes you fly and it's not good because your foundation wasn't solid. So, you know what? A lot of guys think, oh, I went from a million to seven million in sales in a year. And you think it's great. But did you really have a foundation to develop that? And if you didn't, you're going to collapse. But I was working at a company, Matt, in, I think it was 19, uh, what was it? Maybe 95. They were doing $195 million in 1995. I don't know what that is today. And I a joined lot of them. Money. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I joined them after I closed my business to go partners with them in, in what I was doing in the picture frame division. And I was there for a couple of months. And a friend of mine was working there. I said, uh, and I was trying to send out money to a factory about um, 10 grand, nothing. And the owner kept telling, okay, we're doing it next week, next week. I went to a friend of mine. I said, you know, these guys are in trouble. He looked at me like I was crazy. Are you out of your mind? There's 150 people. He's doing $200 million. I said, he can't send out 10 grand. There's no money. They went bust about six months later. Because that's what happened. You know, you start growing and you're not seeing how strong is my foundation to handle our business. So I, I would say a lot of it probably is going to boil down to not having a strong foundation. Again, I don't know. That's my speculation on it. Well, I, probably in a lot of cases. And you're trialing by error and you're kind of adjusting as you go. Yeah. And then once it really starts picking up... Uh, it doesn't become less stressful at that point. It actually becomes more, I would imagine. Normally, the bigger the team and the more people, the more yeah. thing goes wrong. So, and, I, and I wonder... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, you know, and I wonder how many people... You know, I wonder how many people really know what they're doing. Like, again, I got into business. I thought... You know, it's funny. Like you said, it's very simple, but it's not. I thought I knew what I was doing. I was in business for seven, eight years. I was doing business. I was going overseas, going to China, selling customers. But you know what? I really didn't know what I was doing. So I think it's also important to, to going back to building that foundation, to educating yourself and make, hey, what are the facets of the game? Um, you know, in the U.S., we have American football. And, um, you know, they'll always tell you if you want to win, you need to excel in all three aspects of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. And, you know, in business, it's the same thing. You need to know what are the, what are the fields? What do I need to excel in? What do I really need to understand? And it doesn't, and again, it, it doesn't have to be going to university. It could be online courses and stuff, but get a little educated to understand what's really involved, especially for entrepreneurs that think it's, oh, I'll go on Instagram. I'll start posting. I'll sell this. I'll sell that. And I, there's a lot more involved in it. 
So I think to, to build that foundation, educate yourself a little to see what the challenges may be. Yeah. Well, it's actually a very, very good point. Uh, and I and probably like actually to underline that that's probably something that people should do before things really start to pick up because then you won't have time to yes. go in and study all of these things because you need to double down on whatever is working yeah. because this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah. Yes. And also like, yeah, be honest with like yourself and your like strengths and weaknesses. Like you touch upon like accountability and that's such a powerful thing. And even more powerful, you can like find yourself a couple of accountability partners that has other areas of expertise than you. So you can at least be pointed in the right direction, go get advice and kind of don't have to go out and research everything yourself because that takes a lot of time, a lot, a lot of time. That's a great, but that's a great, great point you brought up. It's so, I, you know, I didn't think about it as you were saying it. It's so important, really. Know what your weaknesses are. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. And what you're weak in, yeah, reach out for help. That's a, that's a phenomenal point. A lot of times we think we're Superman and we can do everything. You can't. Like, not everyone's cut out for everything. Some guys are great in sales. Some guys are great in, in technology. Some guys are good in marketing. That's a, that's a phenomenal point. So is it just the ego that's stopping people not doing that? Do you believe? Or is probably. it like lack of knowledge? It's probably, you know, it's probably, it's probably a little bit of ego, not wanting to acknowledge what you're not great at and you want to think you can conquer the world and do it all. Yeah, I, I probably. Because it's like, well, there's all that, always that thing, we want to be right, it feels good. And it's, I, I think I started to implement it a lot, a little bit by accident, actually, because because people do like to learn, reaching out to people and asking them like a simple question, um, you, not anything that would be too easy to just find an into something a bit more specific than that. But then like getting them to teach you something is a great way to start off a conversation. And then you have your foot in the door because people love doing that kind of stuff. And then I was like, I'm actually getting a lot of value from this. Yeah. And for me, it's always the balance of this thing pops up and then not reacting to it instantly. Because if I react to it instantly, then I'm going to have a million questions, shoot a million questions over to whoever I'm speaking to. And in half a day, I probably remove all of those questions, come up with one new question. That's a lot better because I did all of the research myself. So I think that's like taking a yeah. deep breath. I don't know in, in your, like what you have found to be like one useful or the most useful thing, if you can put it into like a, a short list throughout your business experience. In what, just in general? Yeah, in the way of like running your own business and keeping on the right track and keep growing. And not making the same mistakes as you do so, in the first edition. Obviously, always focus on, on what the big picture is, which is really yeah. making sure all aspects of the business are strong. And again, if you're an entrepreneur doing social media or, or you're a businessman, whatever it is, there's, every business has multifacets to it. So I would say always, always make sure you're focusing on all aspects of the business. And if that means, let's say, once a week or one I once a week might be too much. Maybe once every two weeks, even once a month to now if you have someone you're working with to go together and if it's yourself, just to go out away from everything and just sit and think, how how am I doing now? What, are all the aspects of the business working? What do I need to strengthen up? What do we need to fix? What's doing well that we can make stronger? So I would say always maintaining focus on, on the big picture. If you have a uh, a, a business that you have people and employees and stuff, are you, are they working the right way? I'm meaning, are you empowering them the right way? Are you giving them the space they need to do their jobs? You know, that's another, that's a, a side pet, pet peeve of mine is yeah. when you, when you hire top talent and you don't use them because either you're, 
micromanaging or you're scared or you don't trust them or whatever the case is. But it's so important, especially today. I mean, there's tons of statistics on unengaged employees. And I found myself most of the time people are unengaged because, you know, you, you brought me in to do a job and you're on top of me every 10 minutes. So you know what? You do the job. I'll sit on my phone. I'll go on my YouTube. I'll go on Instagram. You know, empower you if you brought good people in, you know, so to speak, give them enough rope to hang themselves. You know, if you trust them to do what you brought them in for, make sure you're empowering your people. Make sure your staff is happy. You know, again, it's cliche, but it's so true. If you if you're miserable going to work, you're not going to be productive. And 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 who's and by the way, who's going to suffer? The owner. Yes. He's going to suffer. I'm, I'm not working. for. I'm working to make you money. Not. To, I mean, obviously, you're, you're going to be compensated as well. But the truth is, the owner's going to make the big money. Make sure your people are happy. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. No it doesn't worries. mean that, uh, you know, every day it works. But, you know, work is work. There's things to do. But make sure people are happy. Hey, how was your weekend? Make, make them feel they are part of I, I'm a big believer in that. Make them feel it's, it's part of a family and it's a group and it's a team. You know. It's funny, in, in my business, I had someone that was um, working for us, very, ni- very nice lady. She did everything for us. She was doing billing and accounts payable and accounts receivable. And we were paying her, again, I'm going back in the 80s, we were paying her about 50-something thousand a year. She was a single mother, and she she was a single mother, and she had adopted her sister's kids. So she had two kids that she was taking care of. And... Anytime something came up, uh, oh, uh, Pat uh, comes in, I have to go. No problem, go. Okay, uh, I'll do this later. No problem. I, I know she had gotten many job offers for seventy-five, eighty, eighty-five thousand dollars, and she never took them because she was happy. She knew she was a place that cared about her, and it wasn't important to her. You know, people don't realize that it's most of the time it's not about the money. You know, I went to a time, uh, no, a business summit. I was working for a company, Lee and Fung. We went to um, Hong Kong for a management summit, and they were listing priorities for for, uh, white-collar workers. I think money was number 12 on the list. It was freedom. It was empowerment. It was this. You know, so it's very important to make sure your people are happy. I know I jumped off topic a little bit, but. I think um, it's very important. But subject. it's a very, 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 very important subject. Very important subject. So, I mean, just getting back to the original point, um, I would always say stay focused on the big picture. Go out of the office without anything once a month and see if everything's on track, see what you can improve, see what needs to work. And if you have a team with you, make sure they're happy, make sure they're empowered, and make sure you're giving them the, the tools. That, you know, as a manager or as an owner, your job is to facilitate them. You're only there to give them the tools they need, and that's it. Just stay out of their way and let them do their job. Yeah, that's that's what you get the best results from. Yep. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was watching, I did... I'm sorry. I was, I was watching. Sorry to cut you off. I was watching a uh, a show once. The new CEO from Best Buy Electronics. He was uh, he was from France, and he was working in a totally totally different industry. And when they offered him the job, he said, uh, you know, he didn't want to take it because he knew nothing about the electronics world. He ended up taking it and he said, I learned I don't need to be the smartest guy in the room. And he grew the company by, by leaps and bounds. Well, that's well, the, a lot of the, when you see the very big CEOs that the, run very, very, very big corporations and started the corporations themselves as well. I've all, all heard them say that the most important thing for them is hiring the smartest people. Yep. Like They don't need to be an expert. They just need to know enough to hire the right person. Yep. That's the most important thing to them. And then, of course, you become very smart in the subject What you quiz all of the smartest people in the planet about it on a daily basis. You get, like, a university degree in three months. Yeah. They just throw all this knowledge at you. Yeah, it goes back to that humility we kind of talked about. Um, yeah. about like, having that yes. ego of needing to be the smartest person in, in the room. And 
I think that's also when it comes to selling can be a very, very dangerous thing if you have that as your idea. Because then you can very easily communicate in a way of they're wrong. And if the underlying tone is you're wrong, the other person is going to yeah. detach from the conversation and not, and not talk to you. Yeah. I've had like people that have been on sales calls with and I'll be like, I won't buy you. I'm not buying your stuff because <laughs> you're basically sitting here and telling me your method is wrong. Mine is a lot better. Like, it might be, but tell it in a different way because I'm not buying it from you. <laughs> buying it from somebody else if I'm ever going to buy it. If our audience, the listeners, like what they heard in this episode, what would be the best way for them to check you out, learn more about what you do? Because I definitely enjoyed our time today. <clears throat> Me too. Uh, so I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. You can look at my name, Kemi Safty. Um, if you want to email me, um, my email is Kemi, that's K-E-M-M-Y, at the Safety Group, um, the Safety, S-A-F-D-I-E, the Safety Group.com. And um, I'm always available. You know, anyone wants to talk, I'm, I'm, I always love to talk. I always love to talk and, and help. See, you are very much like a coach consultant. Because that's generally what coaches say. They love speaking to people yeah. and just seeing where they can like add value and point people in the right direction. It yeah. doesn't have to be like, I'm going to sell you this or this or this. It's more mm -hmm. about, okay, let me add some value. And if you need this on a regular basis, let's talk. Right. And if I can't, and you know, I, it's funny. And if I can't add value, I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk to you. In other words, I'm not. I'm not here. Right, I'm not here. Not not in a bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to sell you something. Yeah. Maybe maybe I can't. Maybe I'm not for you. That's why sales. It's a comp. Maybe I'm not for you. And if I'm not, that that's fine. That's funny how people react once you try and disqualify them on a sales call. Yeah, <laughs> they really want to work with you. Yeah, but uh, no, it's no. a no. <laughs> right? Maybe it's not. You have to be a right fit. Yes, I think that's. It puts you in such a, a powerful position when you know what the right hit is because yeah. then you're so much more transparent. But now I'm getting off subject as well. So <laughs> I'm going to have the links down below. And for the people that want to talk more with Kemi, definitely reach out to him. I would encourage you to.